Hello everyone, my name is Christian Drapeau and I'm really grateful to Dr. Vasily Tabar for this opportunity to uh, present you with this information. Uh, I've been uh, working with Dr. Vasily Tabar for a number of years and uh, we are working together exclusively to bring uh, this new product, a new stem cell enhancer called Stem Regen uh, to Iran. So, uh, so what is Stem Regen? So stem regen is based on a concept called endogenous stem cell mobilization, uh, which means the release of your own stem cells. Uh, to better understand what this means, we first need to understand what is a stem cell. Stem cells have been known for long times as the precursors to blood cells, precursors to red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. But historically, they were believed to be limited to only becoming blood cells. But what was discovered uh, probably about 15 years ago is that stem cells from the bone marrow, not only can they become blood cells, but they can also become heart cells, pancreatic cells, liver cells, brain cells, kidney cells, lung cells, essentially virtually any cell types of the body. Now, when we talk about stem cell treatments in today's world, we talk about the isolation of stem cells from a source, uh, which could be the umbilical cord, and can be the blood itself, adipocyte, which is fat cells, fat tissue. Uh, it can be the dental pulp. Now, when stem cells are extracted from these sources, we don't have enough stem cells to do a stem cell injection. So scientists have developed ways, methods, to multiply stem cells, to proliferate stem cells, and then stem cells are injected in the bloodstream or in an artery at the entrance of a tissue. So if stem cells are in the blood to begin with, uh, and then we inject them in the bloodstream, so all we do is that we increase the number of circulating stem cells through an injection. So this begs the question, what if we could increase the number of circulating stem cells, not through an injection, but by stimulating the release of our own stem cells from our own bone marrow. And that's what we refer to as endogenous stem cell mobilization, which means the release of your own stem cells from your own bone marrow. Now, for this to mean something for health, we need first to demonstrate that indeed, stem cells in the body constitute the natural repair system of the body. This is a concept that we first proposed in the scientific literature nearly 15 years ago in an article that we published in a journal called Medical Hypothesis. We propose that stem cells from the bone marrow, one of their main role is to repair the various tissues and organs in the body. So now let's look 15 years later, hundreds of studies, if not thousands of studies have been published uh, in, this, in this domain, uh, clearly demonstrating that this is what stem cells are doing in the body. So let's look at what we know today. So anytime there is an injury, it could be an injury to a muscle, to the liver, to the lung, to the skin. But a lot of these studies have been done with heart attack. So for example, on the day that someone has a heart attack, if that person goes to the hospital, we can measure in the blood the presence of very specific compounds that are known to go to the bone marrow and trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So within a few hours after a heart attack, we can see these compounds, and a few days after the heart attack, we can see the number of stem cells increasing in the bloodstream. Now, how can stem cells identify that it is the heart, in the case of a heart attack, that needs repair? Well, what happens is that within two, three days, the affected tissue, here we're talking about the heart, will release very specific compounds that will attract stem cells to that tissue. And when stem cells circulate into the fine capillaries of that tissue, and they go into the area that is affected, stem cells will be called to migrate out of the blood circulation into that tissue, where upon contact with cellular debris of that tissue, stem cells will multiply and then transform into cells of that tissue. So we have these various steps here. The release of stem cells from the bone marrow, their circulation in the bloodstream, their migration into tissues, and then their proliferation and differentiation into cells of that tissue. Now, all these steps are important. But in science, in the scientific literature, the part that has been the most described is the link between the ability of stem cells to repair tissues and the number of circulating stem cells in the bloodstream, which is the consequence of the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Here's a study published about 10 years ago. It's a study in which scientists uh, took 500 individuals at risk for cardiovascular problems. 
they quantified the number of stem cells in circulation in these people without any stimulation of any kind, just the natural number of stem cells circulating in their bloodstream. Then they monitored during one year any kind of cardiovascular events. We're talking here arrhythmia, angina, heart attacks. And then at the end of one year, they did the statistical correlation between the number of circulating stem cells and the occurrence of any kind of cardiovascular problems. And what was found is that if we separate these people into, four, into three equal groups, people with a lot of stem cells, people with average number of stem cells, and people with a very low number of stem cells naturally, naturally occurring in their bloodstream, well, the people with more stem cells showed much, much fewer cardiovascular problems. So the, st the conclusion of that study was that the number of circulating stem cell was the best predictor of cardiovascular health. And we can extend that to uh, health in general. More stem cells in circulation means that more stem cells are available to migrate to various tissues and participate to the process of tissue repair. So this brings us back where we started with the concept of endogenous stem cell mobilization. Can we improve health by stimulating the release of our own stem cells. A lot of work has been done in this field and published in the scientific literature, so let's look at a few studies. Let's look at, for example, at the heart. Here is a study that was published a number of years ago where scientists triggered heart attack in mice by ligation of the coronary artery. So they deprived blood flow to the heart. Uh, after the heart attack, they let the animals recover. Uh, they separated the animals in two groups. One group was controlled, to which they did nothing. And the other group, they triggered stem cell release from the bone marrow during eight to 10 days. And then they looked at the animals uh, 27 days later. When we look at the control group, we can see severe uh, scar tissue in the ventricular wall, uh, no new blood vessels, 17% survival, and fairly severe signs of cardiomyopathy, heart problems. Now, when we looked at the experimental animals who had simply more stem cells during 8 to 10 days, we can see a complete renewal of the ventricular wall, uh, new functional blood vessels tapping in the other ventricle, 73% survival, and quasi-normalized cardiovascular function. So in a world where there is nothing that we can do for a heart attack, there's a study here showing that by drastically increasing the number of circulating stem cells in the bloodstream, we can virtually reverse the consequence of a heart attack in one month. And similar studies exist for Parkinson, uh, for imp the improvement after stroke, spinal cord injury, diabetes, liver degeneration, lung disease, wounds and injury, burn to the skin. So, and as the more we go in science, the more we, real we realize that increasing the number of circulating stem cells can really have a very positive impact on a broad variety of health health conditions and health problems. Now, this is leading us to another part that to me is probably the most interesting. Because as we did all these studies to show the link between the number of stem cells in the bloodstream and the ability to improve various health conditions, we're discovering that this whole process of tissue repair exists not only when there is a tissue to be repaired, but in the background, simply to renew cells. We lose cells every day, and the cells that are lost are replaced by cells coming from the bone marrow. And so in that way, we have learned that every single tissue of the body is in constant process of renewal to the point where we can say, and these are only approximations, but we can say that we have new muscles every uh, six to nine years, uh, a new liver every two, three years, a new brain. Uh, well, the brain, we don't have a time frame for a new brain, but the brain is in a constant process of renewal as well. We have a new pancreas every four or five years, new lung every four or five years. Studies have shown that even the heart renews with a new heart uh, probably every 25 to 50 years. But the message here is that every organ is in this constant uh, process of tissue repair, tissue renewal. Now, why is this important? Today in the world, our general understanding of disease formation is cellular loss. 
any time, for example, diabetes is the results of losing the cells making insulin. Uh, hypothyroidism is the results of losing cells making uh, the hormones T3, T4. Uh, macular degeneration is the loss of cells in the retina. If you think Parkinson is the loss of cells making dopamine in the brain, any degenerative disease is the loss of a specific type of cells in the body. What will make one person develop diabetes while somebody else develops Parkinson, while somebody else develops uh, another type of problem, is a whole series of, of, of parameters, of factors, like your genetics, past injuries, uh, exposure to environmental toxins, your lifestyle, your diet, your ability to rest, your physical stress, emotional stress, your ability to deal with all these, these stresses. Now, everybody knows all of this. Nothing is new in all of this. But if we come back now to what we were just talking about before, let's take, for example, the pancreas. We have a pancreas roughly every four years. That means that as an adult, for example, I have had in my life several pancreases, at least 10 pancreases. So I have renewed, I have lost and replaced my pancreas more than 10 times, but I am not diabetic. So it means that the loss of cells is not the cause of diabetes. So it brings us to a much greater uh, picture, which includes another aspect. We don't only lose cells, we replace the cells that, are been, that have been lost by stem cells. So we lose health when we lose the balance between cellular loss and tissue renewal. As long as we have enough stem cells in circulation to replace the cells that have been lost, our body can maintain its health. It's when there is a decline in the number of circulating stem cells in our ability to repair that slowly cellular loss gains ground. So everything is a matter of cellular loss. A an interesting analogy here would be like to say, uh, when we do bankruptcy, is it because we've lost our money? Uh, intuitively, we would say, yes, it's because I've lost my money. But most of the time, it's because we have lost our income. And it's the loss of our income that has, lost, that, ha that has led to the fact that we've lost, generally speaking, uh, our money. So it is the income that is at fault. It's the same thing here. We develop health problems because there's a decrease in our income in terms of stem cells and our ability to repair. So when we understand this, then it is important to do anything that we can to support the natural role of stem cells in the body, which is the ability of stem cells to, to be released from the bone marrow, to increase the number of circulating stem cells, their circulation and their migration in tissues. And so this is what we have done with product like Stem Regen, which we'll talk about in a moment. But let's just focus on this for a few more, a few more seconds here. If all of this is true, there is one way to really prove and demonstrate that this is what is happened, that is taking place in the body. If really health is a consequence of the number of circulating stem cells, we can prove this by quantifying the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various kinds of health problems and compare this to the number of stem cells that we can find in healthy people. And we should see statistically that people who have developed problems have fewer stem cells in circulation. So let's look at diabetes. When the number of stem cells was quantified in people with normal glucose tolerance, then impaired fasting glucose, then impaired glucose tolerance, and finally diabetes, we see a straight line. As we advance in the development of diabetes, people have fewer and fewer stem cells uh, in circulation. In the case of diabetes, what is very interesting is that in it, it's sort of a vicious circle. Diabetes also, uh, meaning having elevated blood glucose, suppresses the ability of releasing stem cells, which leads then to a lower ability of various parts of the body to heal. And it is believed today to be one of the reasons behind the development of so many different health problems linked to diabetes. And a similar relationship has also been established with kidney function or kidney failure, pulmonary disease, arthritis, liver failure, heart disease, just a very general concept of aging, what comes with aging, people with more stem cells will age better. Uh, and also conditions like lupus and Alzheimer's in which not only the number of stem cells is lower, but the ability of stem cells to contribute to tissue repair is also uh, reduced. So the conclusion is that a deficiency in the daily ability of stem cells to simply go and do tissue renewal, small tissue repair, uh, is probably one of the main cause of the development of degenerative diseases. And endogenous stem cell mobilization 
which means the release of our own stem cells can really have a wide application in the prevention or even improvements of various health condition. So this leads really to the heart of our topic, what can we do to increase the number of circulating stem cells, and this is why we have developed uh, stem regen. Stem regen contains a number of compounds that have been demonstrated to either support the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, increasing the number of circulating stem cells, or the migration of stem cells out of the blood into tissues. So we first release stem cells and then support their migration in various tissues. So let's look at a few of these ingredients. The first ingredient is Aphanizominon Flus Aqua, in short AFA. AFA is a blue-green algae naturally growing in Klamath Lake in southern Oregon in the United States. So in 2002-2003 uh, we identified the active compound in AFA responsible for stem cell release. So we designed a concentrate of AFA and when one person consumes this concentrate of AFA, it leads within one hour after consumption to an increase in about three to four million new stem cells in the blood circulation, which is really significant uh, for, for overall health. Then we started after the discovery of the effect of AFA, then it really confirmed the whole model and the whole, the whole concept here that taking plants that can support stem cell release can really lead to uh, improvements in health. So we then continued our investigation by looking at other plants known historically to be linked to uh, a broad variety of health benefits. And we discovered one, which is a, a plant called wakame. Its scientific name is Andaria pinatifida. Uh, this, it is a seaweed, and this seaweed contains a polysaccharide called ficoidan. Consumption of ficoidan also led to an increase in the number of, of uh, circulating stem cells within a few hours consumption, but also led to a, a background increase in the, in the number of circulating stem cells over time. So increase in the number of, of stem cells over time, but also every day that we take the product, there's a wave of stem cells that is sent in the body. Then we continued to look at other plants worldwide, and we found one specific type of aloe, of which we derived an extract, and consumption of this extract from aloe leads to a very significant increase in the number of circulating stem cells of uh, 60%. So we're talking here of uh, five to, to six million new stem cells in circulation. And this one did not last for just a few hours, but after three hours, the number of stem cells was still increasing. So this is also a key component of, of uh, stem regen. And finally, uh, an extract from Echinacea, a plant that is very well known to support the immune system. Well, it was discovered also that after a heart attack, for example, if we give an animal uh, this extract of Echinacea, we can see a very significant increase in the number of circulating stem cells, which means that any time we have an injury, if we take this product during that time, then it really leads to more stem cells uh, in circulation. And then we have these other natural components, uh, highly fractionated colostrum, polysaccharide from goji berry, uh, extract from reishi mushroom, lion's mane, and beta-glucans coming from uh, a specific algae called Uglina gracilis, all these compounds were known or were shown to uh, support the migration of stem cells out of the blood into the tissues. So what we have with stem regen really is a product that is all natural that supports the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and then their migration out of the blood into tissues. And a higher number of circulating stem cells means that more stem cells are available to participate to the process of tissue repair. So I hope here that this was clear enough. The key message is very simple. More stem cells in the bloodstream means that the body, the body is better at maintaining its own health or regaining health. So anything that you can do to stimulate the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and put more stem cells in circulation will mean that you will have a better health. And Stem Regen is the best product on the marketplace right now to support both the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and the migration of stem cells out of the blood into tissues. So give it a try and really experience what this can do for your health. So again, I thank, uh, I'm grateful to Dr. Vasari Tabar for this opportunity to present you with this information and uh, we will continue to do our work and our research. Thank you.